uh, take a little look at something that's a field that's called uh, ITC or instrumental transcommunications. And in this instance, I've pointed a video camera and a computer or a television display, and I've created what's called a video loopback, which means that the camera's recording its own signal in a closed loop system. And uh, we're going to see something appear. And I'm, I'm using I'm using sound. I'm, I'm using devotional music in the background while I'm recording. So let's see what happens when I when I do this. And so we see the reptilian face of the turtle. 
And there's also something else about you know the details of these images. It's not just the forms, but the tilak or the forehead marking, which in you know, Vaishnava Hinduism represents the footprint of Vishnu, is in verse on the Karma avatar. We see the tilak, the inverse tilak, is represented here. So the iconic symbolism of photography is talking to us about these archetypes in the language of images, in the language, language of iconography. It's not difficult uh, for someone who's, who studies uh, you know, Hindu Tantra to, to identify the avatar. Although these may be related to many other traditions, the procedure that I'm following, the tradition that I'm following to produce the images is, is, uh, is yoga. How did I construct the form that you're seeing here? This is sort of the icing on the cake because the original frame, the photographic frame, is one half of the image. So here I've created a file that's twice the horizontal width of the original, and I'm simply pasting two copies of the frame, and then I'll take one half, and I will mirror that half to realize the final form that we're seeing. And so when reciting mantra, the inherent to the mantra is this iconic archetype. It's, a, it's the visual signature of the auditory waveform, and it's realized in my breath condensation, which of course is made out of that element we were talking about earlier, which is water. Water with its inherent reflective tendencies is here being constrained in an iconic form that's not difficult to recognize as the face, as the eyes, the tilak, the mouth, the reptilian form, the, the kerma avatar of Vishnu. Let's look at some of the uh, the other uh, avatar images that I was able to produce using the same procedure and the same uh, interpretive method. So again, inherent to the human voice are the uh, iconic images, but they're embedded in a mirror form. Varaha avatar is the boar avatar. So we go from an animal that lives in water and land to a land-based animal. This is in the order that the Puranas describe the avatars in the incarnations. It's a statue of Raha, another statue. And this image, which is interesting too, here I say this again is breath condensation constrained into this iconic archetypal form. Here is fire constrained into a related form because I see the profile of, of a man with an eye and an ear and like a sideburn, he's bald. He has like a pig-like nose, just like the Varaha avatar displays here. I say that this is water, this is fire, constraining the elements into recognizable, intelligent designs that I can uh, trace back to roots in uh, Sanskrit literature. And the methodology is uh, I'm reciting mantras and pressing the shutter. How did I create the image? Again, here's the original file. I create a file that's twice the horizontal width. I paste the original into that file and just uh, carefully align it. And then I paste the second copy. And here is the second image. And once they're correctly aligned along the vertical axis in the center, I simply reverse or mirror one half. And there, by using the reversing procedure, the mirroring procedure, I see the face that appears in the mirror. The iconic archetype is embedded in the mirror, just like the archetypes of the unconscious are embedded in the speech signal that we detect through reverse speech. People describe their unconscious conditions, which include, of course, the well-recognized archetypes that are discussed in psychology there. They're embedded, they're embedded in, our, in our voices. Let's uh, 